potato. It's four o'clock and our borders just closed to Brisbane. The new rules you need to know. No regrets. I wouldn't have changed a word. Sacked radio star Jeremy Cordeaux stands by his controversial comments. The Adelaide schoolboys who desperately tried to save their mate off York Peninsula. Seven people injured after a horror crash at McLaren Vale. And backline boost key crow Daniel Talia on the verge of a long-awaited return. Live from Adelaide, 7 News with Rosanna Mangiarelli. Good afternoon. First to the unfolding COVID outbreak that's just resulted in our border being slammed shut to Greater Brisbane. It will throw Easter travel plans for thousands of South Aussies into chaos. Mark Mooney has the details. These Brisbane arrivals are some of the lucky ones, beating the border closure by just three hours. They will still have to isolate and get tested, but they've managed to avoid 14 days of quarantine. Their flight touched down just as Premier Stephen Marshall announced the closure. We're not happy to do this. Uh, in fact, uh, we know that this is going to be a huge inconvenience to people, especially in the lead up to this uh, Easter period. Declaring Greater Brisbane a COVID hotspot after the cluster there grew to seven overnight. Alarmingly, it's the highly infectious UK strain. So from 4pm today, only returning South Australians, essential workers and permanent relocators will be allowed into our state from the affected area. This situation is evolving. The number of exposure sites has been increasing. Relief for those who made it just in time. Yeah, we're super lucky. Um, we were yeah tossing up whether to come in last night or today and um, yeah, managed to just get flights this morning, so very lucky, but yeah, hope they can get it all under control. But not everyone's so fortunate. There's a flight due to arrive at 4.45 this afternoon. Everyone on board will be forced into two weeks quarantine. And that's why we've uh, pulled this press conference together as quickly as possible to give that advance notice to uh, people who might be on that flight. Anyone who's arrived from a hotspot since March 20 is banned from entering high-risk settings including aged care homes and larger venues with a COVID management plan like Adelaide Oval. My team will be reassessing the the situation on a daily basis. As for those passengers booked on that 4.45 flight, well, they had a big decision to make. We'll have the latest in our main bulletin at six. In Brisbane, locals have been panic buying ahead of a citywide three-day lockdown which is about to kick in to try to contain the latest outbreak. Marlena Wop reports. Well, good afternoon. Given an explosion of COVID cases of the highly contagious UK variant over the past few days, and now a nurse testing positive, Greater Brisbane will be going into a snap three-day lockdown from five this afternoon. I know this is a really big call. I know it's very tough. We've got, we've got Easter coming up, we've got school holidays coming up. The lockdown will be enforced across five local government areas of Brisbane City, Logan, Ipswich, Moreton Bay and the Redlands. The cluster now stands at seven cases with four new local infections detected overnight. Two are work colleagues of a recent case and there's concern that one of them had recently travelled into regional Queensland and been infectious for three days in Glasgow. Adston. A fever clinic has opened up there and long queues have been forming. Two women have also tested positive, a nurse from the PA hospital and her sister. They had been in Byron Bay out and about in the community over the past few days. We now have um, significant community transmission and significant numbers of venues of concern all through Brisbane and we know that people have moved from Brisbane out into the broader community. Now the lockdown will be reviewed on Wednesday night but authorities are bracing for the possibility of more cases before then. Veteran radio announcer Jeremy Cordeaux has been sacked from 5AA but doesn't regret his harsh assessment of alleged rape victim Brittany Higgins. He said on air that she was a silly girl who got drunk and deserved to have her bottom smacked. Mike Smithson has been following today's developments. He's been a controversial radio institution for more than 50 years, but now has Jeremy Cordeaux gone too far? Why are we going through these machinations about this young woman? She should have her bottom smacked. 
Today's reaction to his Brittany Higgins comments was swift. Nova Entertainment sincerely apologised without reservation to Miss Higgins. The 75-year-old radio veteran was effectively then sacked on air, but no contrition from him soon after. It's not for sitting on the fence. It's got to be contentious. You've got to have opinions. There's going to be controversy. And a radio station in the talk business has got to understand that's the territory. Brittany Higgins voiced her views publicly, thanking Nova and politely disagreeing with Mr Cordeaux, especially in relation to the bottom smacked reference. It's the advice I give to my own daughter. Do not go out and get drunk. Do not put yourself in harm's way. Be on guard all the time. Don't be a silly little girl. I don't think you go around sacking people because they have a strong opinion about something. I wouldn't have changed a word. Media commentator Peter Ford says commentary is a centrepiece of talkback radio, but certainly not Cordo's comments. But I do think probably it was done in a very crude and disrespectful way, the, the words and terms that were used. Others weighed in condemning the announcer and applauding his sacking. He doesn't get it. He thinks, uh, you know, that this type of uh, commentary is OK. It's not. It's actually really dangerous. I don't think the comments that he made on Saturday uh, morning were acceptable and I, I note that 5AA have taken action. Cordai doesn't necessarily see this as the end, but even he knows his days in radio could well be over. Seven people were injured in a horror smash at McLaren Vale. Emergency crews were called after three cars collided at the intersection of Main and Johnston Roads yesterday afternoon. The accident has left a woman fighting for life. Anyone who saw the crash and hasn't yet spoken to police is being asked to contact them. A northern suburb school has come under fire for allowing students to participate in a fishing trip that ended in tragedy. As Casey Trelaw reports, friends of a 16-year-old who drowned on York Peninsula today returned to school. As students returned to their classrooms here at Pinnacle College today, there was a wave of emotions. From sadness and grief, it soon turned to anger. One classmate unleashed on school staff as the realisation she'd lost a friend had sunk in. I don't want to come up again. It comes after the tragic drowning of Year 11 student Ahmad Alfaran while on a school fishing trip. The 16-year-old's body was recovered in waters off York Peninsula's Browns Beach after he and other classmates slipped on rocks and into the sea. One teenage student who says he rushed into the water to try and help Ahmad returned to school briefly today. And you jump emotionally traumatic for Ahmad. Come okay. on. The emotion too much to bear for others too. It's a bit too much right now. I just, okay. Yeah, sorry. Some are demanding answers from the school, but it's unclear whether it'll conduct its own formal investigation into the death. So we have uh, policies and we follow up the procedures, but as you know that this is under the um, um, municipal investigation at the moment. That's why like, we cannot talk. As a result of this tragic accident, the school is offering counselling to students and staff. Four men have each been jailed for 20 years over the murder of an Albanian refugee at a northern suburbs drug house. Aaron Carver, Matt Ten Hoopen, Benjamin Mitchell and Alfred Rigney stormed Urim Jabri's Paravista home in 2018. They bashed him over the head and left him to die before stealing a substantial amount of cannabis. CCTV shows the men approaching the house on foot. Their sentence has been backdated to the time of their arrest, which means they'll be eligible for parole in 2038. A man accused of murder over a horror and arson attack at Woodville West has fronted the Adelaide Magistrates Court after being extradited from Sydney. Alessandro Cavuoto allegedly set fire to Todd Bradmore almost two weeks ago. He was arrested the following day after crashing his car during a police chase in New South Wales. The 32-year-old was remanded in custody with the case adjourned for 13 months. The Prime Minister has announced a ministerial reshuffle following weeks of scandals that have embroiled his Cabinet. Political reporter Taylor Aiken has more from Canberra. 
Good afternoon. Well, this reshuffle has been a long time coming, with the Prime Minister initially trying to resist making changes to the structure of his front bench. Christian Porter was dumped as Attorney General due to a conflict of interest as he is suing the ABC. He will now move into industry, science and technology. Michaelia Cash is now Australia's first female Attorney General and will also pick up industrial relations, with Stuart Robert picking up jobs and small business. Meanwhile, Linda Reynolds was dumped as Defence Minister, moving into government services. Peter Dutton is now the Defence Minister, with Karen Andrews moving up into the high-profile Home Affairs role. The Prime Minister also announcing a new Cabinet task force to address key issues of gender equality. I have such a strong voice of women in my Cabinet that I want to bring that together in this way to really help drive this agenda and make sure that they are the dominant voice uh, when it comes to driving that agenda. Today is also the first day businesses won't have JobKeeper support. It's a day that many businesses had been fearing, especially in the industries still being hit hard by the pandemic. Some businesses say they will have no choice but to let staff go now that they don't have the government subsidy to rely on. But Services Australia says they are ready to respond and we won't see the queues stretching outside Centrelink like we did at the start of the pandemic. We've mobilised our staff to ensure that we can deal with that demand. The best way to get onto a payment is to lodge your application online. There's no need to queue outside our offices. Treasury estimates an additional 100 to 150,000 people will be forced to rely on JobSeeker in the coming weeks. The full Easter long weekend forecast has just been released. Amelia Mulcahy has the detail, details and Amelia, it's shaping up to be a cracker. Rosanna, it certainly is. It'll be warm and it should stay dry as well. Just what you want to hear as we head into a long weekend. We're going for a top of 33 degrees on Good Friday. It'll be sunny too, 32 Saturday. Ahead of a change, but at this stage, that change shouldn't bring much in the way of rain. Easter Sunday is looking a little cooler, down to 24 degrees for Easter Monday. Now, this time of year is, of course, the busiest time of year here at Melbourne's Chocolate Factory in the hills. Already, they've made 115,000 Easter eggs, 20,000 bilbies and for the first time sales from bilbies will go to the conservation work that Zoos SA is working on as well and Melba's here is open every day of the long weekend. There'll be food trucks and activities for the kids too if you're like me and you've left your Easter shopping to the last minute, Rosanna. And like me too, thank you Amelia. Now, the identity of the man accused of lighting a bushfire on the day of the Cherry Gardens blaze has been revealed. Details next on the afternoon news. Also, police investigate break-ins on two eastern suburbs' dental practices. A city on alert as the murder trial over the death of George Floyd begins in the US. A big protest in Paris as daily COVID cases soar. And later, why it'll soon be easier to access some of our favourite holiday spots. He did the unthinkable. What's the plan? Different wig for every day. Here I am on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, my favourite. I like it because finally your hairstyle has caught up to your personality. <laughs> now, Luke Beveridge drops in on the front bar, Wednesday, 8.30 on 7. I think we need to upgrade our dining table. Why? What's wrong with this one? Let's, Let's head, head to Wallers. Check out the colour and feel of the seaside range. Actually, Lauren, I'm planning on entertaining a lot. James, does this come in a 12-seater? Rachel, I need a few upgrades, like a new buffet. TV cabinet, desk, and whatever this is called. Upgrade now and take advantage of Wallers' professional delivery and removal service. Wallers, Mount Barker, Richmond and Tanunda. Life skills and confidence for kids, to me that's big. A workplace that really cares for its apprentices, to me that's big. Giving artists a chance to share their stories. <laughs> local jobs for local kids, to me that's big. Getting good food to where it's needed the most, to me that's big. The people in South Australia's great outback, what a place to live. And to have support for things that make it even better. To us, that's big too. Police can't help themselves. My super doesn't work out for me. 
I'll be working forever. Well, we've worked all our lives for this place. We'd hate to have to sell it to fund our retirement. That's for sure. Authorised by B. Dean for Industry Super Australia, Melbourne. How do you make anything taste like Australia? Well, I'll tell you. You squeeze a bit of this on a little bit of that. In your spag, on your snack, on your favourite snack. There are no rules. It's really quite easy. Make anything taste like Australia with new Vegemite Squeezy. Terry Shear, Australia's leading landlord insurance specialist, provides the cover you need for your property and rental income. My property portfolio is protected by Terry Shear. I wouldn't trust anyone else. Call Terry Shear or go online. At Portside Mitsubishi, drive a little and save a lot on our selection of new demo and used vehicles. We'll give you more for less with savings across our entire range. So don't go anywhere, don't buy anything, don't sign anything until you've checked out the deals at Portside Mitsubishi. And then I realised, well, there's not much time left, working life left, and I want to go and experience this, so that was it. I decided that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm glad I did, and it's been exciting, and I thought, well, oh, maybe I should have done it when I first thought about it over a decade ago. Uh, I don't know that you could do this um, and be as successful if you were on your own. Jim's mowing for all your gardening needs. Country is a family business, making it right here in SA. Premium quality every day. Curtains, blinds, even zip tracks to create amazing outdoor rooms. So let's make it modern. Let's make it automated. Let's make it easy. Let's make it for you. City, suburbs or regions, country goes everywhere. So call today for a free measure and quote. Is it any wonder? Twenty-two degrees at Aldinga Beach, a lovely day to be out and about and warming up as we head towards the Easter long weekend. Amelia will be back a little later with more details. The identity of an accused Adelaide Hills firebug has been revealed for the first time. The former CFS volunteer tried but failed to keep a secrecy order in place, saying he doesn't want people to see him. Elspeth Hussey was in court. As bushfires raged through the Adelaide Hills on January 24, police cornered an accused drunk firebug here at Clarendon. Now, for the first time today, we can reveal his identity. This is 61-year-old Gregory McGannon, a former CFS volunteer. His face and name have been kept secret for the past two months as police build their case against him. Today, that suppression order was lifted, despite McGannon pleading for anonymity. Via video link from Mount Gambier Prison, he said, I just want it quiet. I don't want anyone to see me. But that argument failed to sway Magistrate Susan O'Connor. These exclusive pictures obtained by seven you show the moment police swooped on McGannon. Officers say they spotted him at Clarendon on the day of the Cherry Gardens bushfire and as he sped away they saw metre high flames in scrubland. He told police he'd been trying to stomp out the fire saying the bastard who lit it was a bloody idiot. It's alleged he had a cigarette lighter in his pocket, a blood alcohol reading of 0.149 and had blacked out his number plates with texter. Police are investigating if he's responsible for seven other ignition points that started fires that same day. A court's heard cell tower data puts him in the vicinity of those fires. He's made failed bids for bail, saying he's been bashed multiple times in prison. McGannon's attempt to keep his identity a secret wasn't helped when his lawyer failed to arrive on time for this morning's court hearing. Police are investigating two break-ins on a dental surgery and orthodontist. The glass door was smashed at the St Peter's Dentist just before four this morning. Forty minutes later, the Norwood Orthodontist Clinic was ransacked. It's not known if anything was stolen and police are investigating whether they're linked. Opening arguments are set to begin tomorrow in the murder trial of a former police officer charged with murdering George Floyd in Minneapolis last year. He's accused of placing his knee on the neck of Mr Floyd in a case that led to the nationwide Black Lives Matter protests. Tim Lester's in Minneapolis. 
It's an odd setting for a legal team to do a last minute dry run of their case. A church in suburban Minneapolis. Here tonight, just hours before they enter court, the prosecutors let rip as they revved up George Floyd's family and local supporters. This is not a difficult case. This is not a hard case. It's only because it was an unarmed black man face down that everybody is talking about this is going to be a hard case. And this, the court, locked down inside a three metre high concrete and wire perimeter fence and military guard. Such is the worry here Derek Chauvin's trial will ignite the same anger unleashed after his deadly arrest of George Floyd 10 months ago. The veteran police officer pinned the 46-year-old black man to the pavement, knee to the neck, for more than nine fatal minutes. And the question is, will the law stand up in the courtroom in Minneapolis, Minnesota? Derek Chauvin's defence team has already won a small tactical victory, though. They've convinced the judge video from a separate police arrest of George Floyd one year earlier can be used as evidence. The whole point here is we have medical evidence on what happens when Mr. Floyd is faced with virtually the same situation. Confrontation by police at gunpoint, uh, followed by a rapid ingestion of some drugs. The defense will argue George Floyd was addicted to drugs and fentanyl discovered in his blood during the autopsy, as well as heart disease, explain his death. The only thing that killed George Perry Floyd Jr. on May 25th, 2020, here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, was an overdose of excessive force. The opening arguments begin here overnight, Australian time. A verdict from the jury is likely still weeks away. Tens of thousands of people have taken to the streets of Paris, protesting about climate change and ignoring COVID restrictions. That's despite the number of daily COVID cases skyrocketing to around 40,000. 19 French regions, including Paris, are now in lockdown, and the UK is considering joining Germany in placing border control measures on arrivals from France. Two suicide bombers who targeted a Catholic church in Indonesia have been identified by police, confirming they had pledged allegiance to Islamic State. The Palm Sunday attack at the gates of the church left 14 people injured. Remarkably, the two bombers are the only confirmed deaths. Well, time now to check in with Nikki on what's coming up in sport, Nikki. Well, Rosanna, both the Crows and the Gold Coast fully expect Friday night's clash to go ahead. That is despite the border closure. And Adelaide's hoping to call in some reinforcements with defenders Daniel Talia and Jake Kelly a good chance to come off the injury list. And the Brisbane boys are staying a bit longer than expected in Melbourne. Their clash against Collingwood on Thursday night has been moved to Marvel Stadium so they don't get caught up in Brisbane's lockdown. We'll have all that and lots more coming up in sport. Rosanna? We'll see you then. Thank you, Nikki. Photos have been released of the damage caused at the Adelaide Remand Centre during last December's breakout. That story's next on the afternoon news. Also, sentencing submissions begin for the man dramatically arrested using a milk crate. Sydney, the latest city to cop chaos as Extinction Rebellion protesters take to the streets. And finally, on the move, progress shifting the tanker stuck in the Suez Canal. Renee Zellweger, Colin Firth and Hugh Grant in the hilarious comedy movie Bridget Jones's Diary, tonight 8.30 on 7. Sarah. Jenny Craig works. Start today and save $30 on your first weekly menu on our Rapid Results Weight Loss Plan. Call Jenny Craig now. On the first Good Friday, Jesus Christ died for us on the cross. Three days later, he rose from the dead. May the risen Christ be our light. And let us return to the merciful love of the Father. Be merciful to others. Trust in God's mercy. Three o'clock is the hour when Jesus suffered and died. It is the hour of great mercy. So let us pray the prayer of divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. It's Dynamic Home Enhancement's Hot Summer Sale. 
Beat the heat. Get a cool 21% off your roller shutters. Dynamic Home Enhancements will also give you free installation and a free remote control just to make life easy. Plus, no deposit interest free. Oh, don't forget to ask for your seniors discount. Save hundreds by calling one of Australia's largest roller shutter manufacturers. Dynamic Home Enhancements. Bring your backyard dreams to life with a pergola, veranda or deck by Australian Outdoor Living. Create more space for entertaining, working and living and escape to your own backyard. Our kids take on so much these days and we only ever want the best for them. But sometimes all that activity catches up with them, leaving them feeling run down or even sick. For when a cold or fever hits, there's children's Panadol. It can start to reduce fever in just 15 minutes. But before it comes to that, let's help them ease the pace and find a little downtime. Together, let's rethink care. Fresh local seafood at Samtas, the largest range in Adelaide of premium seafood from SA and the Great Australian Bite. West Coast freshly opened oysters, freshly cooked blue swimmer crabs and crayfish. Bite flathead, red snapper, gulf calamari, whiting, garfish and more. Wow! SA large cooked king prawns, $25.99. Tassie Atlantic salmon portions, $17.99. Sam Tass Brothers Seafood, Richmond Road, Richmond, open seven days, the seafood specialist. The hunt for those responsible for the murder of a man at Virginia has intensified. Deanna Williams joins us now and D. Police have released CCTV footage of the suspects. Yes, they have, Rosanna. They've described this as a targeted execution-style murder. The grainy footage shows two men approaching the Virginia premises in the early hours of Monday, March the 8th. 49-year-old Simon Middleton was gunned down before the suspects run off in different directions. Police believe Simon and his killers are known to each other and say they have already a number of suspects. There's a number of people to date that have provided accounts to police which we don't think are full and correct accounts as to their knowledge and or involvement in this offence. A white Nissan patrol with a broken rear left tail light has been seized and police want anyone who saw the car in the vicinity or has dash cam footage to contact them. Detectives say they won't divulge the motive at this stage, but they believe the men went to the premises with the intention to kill. Now, Rosanna, police have searched seven cars and eight premises as part of this murder investigation. Back to you. Thank you, Dee. A court's released photographs of the damage caused by remand centre escapee Jason Burden during his brazen breakout. Burden climbed into the roof space of a toilet block and pried open an external vent. Photos tendered to the court show damage to the ceiling, roof and wall vent. Burden calmly scaled the exterior wall, walking to freedom before his capture almost two days later. The embarrassing blunder in December cost the jail's operator a $100,000 fine. It was a crime that shocked Australia. A young woman stabbed to death in Sydney and a man arrested by bystanders who used a milk crate to hold him down until police arrived. Sentencing submissions began this afternoon for Mert Ney, who pleaded guilty to murder. Andrew Denny has more. Well, this day in court has been a very long time coming, particularly for the family of Michaela Dunn, the 24-year-old woman murdered so cruelly and violently by Mert Ney. Her parents, sister and about 30 friends and family came here this afternoon where the case against Ney was laid out. It was on August 13th, 2019, when Ney went to a city apartment where Michaela was and used a kitchen knife to brutally stab her to death. He then ran into the street and stabbed a second woman, Lynn Bow, before going on a terrifying mission through the city. 
Now for the first time today, graphic CCTV and disturbing video evidence was played showing Nay filming himself in the moments after murdering Michaela, smiling beside her body, showing off the blood on his hands and clothes and saying, I'm not joking, I did it. Today, Michaela's mother, Joanne, took the stand to read her emotional victim impact statement. In it, she said, I stand here today to speak for those who cannot. I am not here to seek justice, for justice will never be served. Nay has pleaded guilty to murder and causing grievous bodily harm. He generally sat quiet at court, not looking at his victim's family. His sentence hearing continues tomorrow. There was chaos in the centre of Sydney this morning when Extinction Rebellion demonstrators blocked some of the city's busiest streets during peak hour. They chained themselves to the ground and one glued her hand to the road. Robert Ovadia was there. Well, that loud noise uh, behind me is a jackhammer. We've also heard an angle grinder today. Police have been trying to free two protesters whose hands are entombed in a concrete trap. From what we understand from police, they can choose to free themselves from it, but they are not doing so. Police are doing it for them. A number of Extinction Rebellion protesters took to the streets today, very deliberately targeting the CBD. What they're protesting, they say, is the government's involvement in the Narrabri gas project. Which is going to cause a huge amount of emissions, it's going to damage the local water source, it's going to cause food insecurity. A number of protesters have been arrested, from what we understand, a minimum of five. Uh, that will include these two protesters once they are freed from here. This was not a sanctioned event, there was no permit to protest today. Glue is a carbon emitter, so is the concrete used for this trap behind me, so is the phone used for the live broadcast today. When we put those questions to the protesters, they struggled for answers. What sort of contributor to carbon emissions is concrete? Do you know? Yeah, I, yeah, I know. It's about 30% of all emissions. So, so why are you using concrete for this stunt here? Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, we've used recycled pieces of concrete. Although traffic was initially severely affected, police did manage to clear the roads and traffic has been at least able to run smoothly while police deal with this incident on the pavement. A giant container ship has been freed after becoming stuck across Egypt's Suez Canal last week. It was refloated just a few hours ago after a huge multinational effort. Six days blocking one of the world's busiest waterways. The Ever Given stuck with the weight of the world's trade on its shoulders. <laughs> Just a few hours ago, a growing number of tugboats resumed their mission to refloat the stranded vessel with success. The Japanese-owned vessel operated by company Evergreen carries cargo between Europe and Asia, but became wedged across the Suez Canal on Tuesday during a sandstorm, blocking around 369 vessels from passing through, including dozens of container ships, bulk carriers, oil and gas tankers, holding up around $11.8 billion worth of goods and cargo. Salvage crews alternated between dredging and tugging to refloat the 220 thousand ton ship. Yesterday, 14 tugboats pushed and pulled, shifting the vessel around 30 degrees. Fearing the worst, the Egyptian president gave Plan B the go-ahead. Officials preparing to remove containers from the ship to lighten the load. This thankfully didn't go ahead. Efforts by Egyptian, Italian, Dutch and German tugboat crews finally paid off. The Evergreen's 25 crew were overjoyed to be on their way and world financial markets are breathing a sigh of relief. Kaziah Dawn, 7 News. Well, getting to some of our favourite holiday spots on the Flurio will soon be easier. Next on the afternoon news, the plans for major road upgrades and the quirky character that coined a popular catchphrase returning to our screens. I'm 65 years old. Oh man, this is such a long way away. I might be the oldest.
but I have an opportunity to prove to people that you can all put yourself outside of a comfort zone and fly. Bring it on. On the tiger. Kick off the new season at Harvey Norman. Big games need a big screen. And we have all the big brands featuring the very latest tech to enhance your viewing experience. Every TV size from 55 inch up to a king size 100 inches. Pump up the volume with big sound to complement your big screen TV. Plus get 60 months interest free with a bonus gift card up to $500. New season, new tech, new gear. Score a great deal on home entertainment now at Harvey Norman. One look at South Australia's CTP choices shows that SGIC wears the state colours on their sleeve. The wonders of data, eh? Choose SGIC, helping South Australians since 1972. Look around as the favourites come out, it begins. Observing with an eagle eye, mastering the art of stashing. Oh, pretty Irve Grant. Cadbury favourites. Everyone gets their favourites. Every year, I think, Paddy, this will be it. You'll be picked. It's bigger than medals, bigger than money, bigger than premierships. This is why we play. And surely this year, I'll be chosen as a NAB mini legend. Zach Tui? How many brown eyes has he won? Supporting footballers from NAB AFL Auskick to the big time. NAB, more than money. More Australian pet owners and their dogs love Nexgard Spectra. The most complete parasite protection in one tasty chew. Nexgard. Don't sit around. Head into Freedom and get up to 25% off leather and fabric sofas and occasional chairs. Up to 25% off furniture and 50 months interest-free store-wide. Only at Freedom. A beautiful autumn day in Adelaide. Nice to be out and about, kicking the footy or feeding the ducks even. Currently 21 degrees at Collins Reserve at Fulham Gardens. We're heading for a top of 27 tomorrow. Time now to recap our top stories and our borders being slammed shut to Greater Brisbane, throwing Easter travel plans for thousands of South Aussies into chaos. Veteran radio announcer Jeremy Cordeau says he has no regrets despite being sacked by 5AA for his comments about Brittany Higgins. And a northern suburb school has come under fire for allowing students to participate in a fishing trip that ended in tragedy. Two of the busiest roads south of the city are set for major upgrades. Main South Road is due for duplication, but some locals are up in arms over the plan. Tim Hatfield has the details. They are the gateway to the Flurio, and the government says the upgrades to Main South Road and Victor Harbour Road will improve both traffic flow and driver safety. We know during peak tourism times, peak holiday times, these roads are used extensively. And even on a normal day, tens of thousands come down this way. The government is putting up two plans, both set to cost about $560 million each. One of the options is to, to duplicate the road right the way through down to Selix Beach and have roundabouts at the key intersections. The other would mainly use overtaking lanes and wider road shoulders, though the upgrade would stretch further past McLaren Vale. We've got two options on the table here that we're going to go back to the community and uh, seek their feedback on. The Main South Road Action Group, however, isn't convinced by either option. It's not what the community wants. The last thing we want is a series of roundabouts. If overpasses and underpasses are good enough for north, then they're good enough for south. We always get second fiddle down this end. And the government's defending the delay on getting work underway. It was first announced by the former Labor government in 2017, but is now pushing ahead after a financial boost from Canberra. We know that this is going to deliver much, much improved road safety benefits, much improved uh, benefits for the local community as well. The government says it will consult the community before making a decision and hopes to have work underway by the end of the year. Time to check finance now with James Tower at Comsec. Good afternoon, James. How has the local share market started the week? Yeah, very good afternoon to you, Rosanna. Not a great way to kick off the new week for local shares. We had the ASX 200 
dropping back by around 25 points or 0.4 of 1% and cutting short uh, its winning run that we saw at the back end of last week. Uh, we did see some losses coming through from the likes of technology. Afterpay, one of the worst, down about 4%. Travel stocks also weaker on the news of that Brisbane lockdown and travel restrictions. So Flight Centre uh, down around 3%. Webjet falling about 2.8%. There were some winners though, mostly among mining stocks. Fortescue Metals the best there, more than 2% higher. One of the real big winners on the market though, Mortgage Choice, the broker today lifting more than 62%. It received a $244 million takeover from REA Group, which owns realestate.com.au. The Aussie dollar, uh, uh, rather steady rather, um, hovering around 76.2 US cents, Rosanna. Alrighty, thank you so much, James. An iconic character is returning to our screens to mark the 90th anniversary of Smith's Chips. After 30 years, the Gobbledock is making a comeback. The taste. The delicious, tantalising, real potato taste. Gobbledock's cry of chippy, chippy, chippy became a pop culture catchphrase. And Nikki, I probably didn't say that right. It was more like chippy, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but you'd be too young to remember that, would you? Just. I yeah. just remember being very scared, I think. I reckon it was around uh, the late 80s sometimes. Now, a boost for the Crows back line. This is sounding very promising. Yeah, well, they've held up OK, all things considered. But I think it'll be a sight for sore eyes to have Daniel Talia and Jake Kelly back. And we'll have a more on that shortly. Also ahead, the power say they're open to having an extra tool up forward with Todd Marshall pushing to return. And a moment to remember for young Reds keeper Joe Gauci, who saved the day against Sydney. For one night only. Absolutely Gobsmacks. The actors got better and better. I'm 80. The absolute best of the best. My dream has come true. And the best of the worst. I was not expecting that. Britain's Got Talent. Best of the Buzzers, Tuesday, 7.30 on 7. <laughs> Exceedingly good cakes. It's the Michael Hill sale, and you just can't go past all these shiny new things. But these offers won't last. With hundreds of reductions in store and online, you'll step into autumn with plenty of shine. Michael Hill. This May, people everywhere are getting ready for Australia's biggest morning tea. It could be a real team effort or something super simple. We're doing this for Mum. Love you. Host your morning tea your way. Every dollar you raise supports those impacted by cancer. Register today for your free host kit for Australia's biggest morning tea. We need to save for a bigger place. She makes me feel like financing. I feel like financing. It feels good to get on top of your money. <laughs> With the ANZ Financial Wellbeing Challenge. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Why choose Booper? Because you'll get six weeks free when you join on eligible products. Because who doesn't want to save a little more? Search Booper six weeks free to find out more. It's March Madness at Canningvale.com. Palazzo Royale sheet sets from $49.99. Terrazzo towel sets now $39.99. Scented reed diffusers now $19.99. March Madness at Canningvale.com. 
$55,000. With huge money on the line, who would you choose to face on the chase? Weekdays on 7. Hello again, and the Crows are hoping to bolster their back line after copping a lesson against the Swans. Both Daniel Talia and Jake Kelly are likely to be available for Friday night's Suns clash at Adelaide Oval. Monday morning and the Crows are still kicking themselves over Saturday's wayward finishing. Their 22 behinds is the most since their round 10 win over the Dockers back in 2017 when they booted 23. It's something that just happens week to week. Um, obviously the, the guys will go away and we'll work on our, on our goal kicking but um, yeah sometimes you just have days like that where, where you can't convert but the, the promising thing was that we had it in our, in our forward 50 and we had those opportunities. Adelaide's undermanned backline was exposed by superstar Buddy Franklin and first-year player Logan McDonald, but in a huge boost for Matthew Nix, gun defender Daniel Talley is finally in the frame for a return after being plagued by a knee problem all summer. You feel a bit more confident when you have some of these experienced guys around, but uh, as I said, it's, it's, it's a leadership thing too on, on ground, having an, another voice, another experienced head, um, another calm head in, in pressure, pressure situations. Jake Kelly's also served his mandatory 12-day rest period after being concussed against the Cats and is expected to be available for Friday night's Suns clash. And just like in 2020, McPherson says players will do whatever it takes to keep the season alive in the wake of Brisbane's COVID cluster. Everyone's thinking hopefully not again and, and that's not just in footy but um, everyone in general. So yeah, as I said, hopefully, hopefully we can do everything we can to keep footy going and, and keep the season running. It'll be huge for, for the fans and for everyone, I think. The AFL and both clubs expect Friday night's clash to go ahead. Theo Diropoulos, 7 News. Port Adelaide coach Michael Voss is open to a forward line of both Mitch Georgiatis and Todd Marshall. Marshall's expected back this week after pulling out against the Bombers late with a sore back. Georgiatis was excellent as his replacement kicking four goals. I think sometimes you can sort of look at their, um, you know, what their height measurements are or, or you can sort of look at their attributes and um, we tend to pay more attention to their attributes and, um, you know, they all can get on the floor and they've all got speed and, um, I wouldn't want to be chasing any one of them. We've always said form would determine what necessarily happens, so um, certainly coming in, Mitch uh, couldn't do any more, really. Couldn't squeeze him out. Connor Rosie will also return, provided he gets through training this week. And the Lions will spend some extra time in Melbourne due to Brisbane's COVID lockdown. Their Thursday night clash against Collingwood has been moved from the Gabba to Marvel Stadium. Our approach uh, throughout last season, and it'll need to be the same, it's been the same through the AFLW season, is we need to minimise risk where we can. And where there's uncertainty, um, it makes sense to try and make decisions where you um, um, uh, don't escalate that risk. I bought four pairs of jocks for with me, so uh, <laughs> I'll do the fight of laundry today. So, no, we'll, we'll do whatever's required. Four extra players have also flown in from Brisbane today to help cover injuries. They're required to isolate and return negative COVID tests before joining their teammates. An incredible save from the Reds' backup keeper has helped Adelaide United secure its sixth straight win. Joe Gauci denying Sydney in the 89th minute. I'm really proud. I mean, it's been a, it's been a bit of a long road for me to to get my my opportunity. So these are the moments you sort of dream when I was an Adelaide boy to play at Coopers in front of your friends and family. Goodwin calmly slotted his fourth goal in five Reds games in the one 0 win. They're now a point behind the top placed Mariners, who they play Thursday night on the road. Well, the Australian women's cricket team has beaten New Zealand by six wickets in the opening game of their T20 series in Hamilton. Chasing 131, Elise Perry hit 23 not out in her return to the national team after a year out with a hamstring injury. But it was Ash Gardner who stole the show with a match-winning 73 not out. And it's going to run away for four and she picks up another boundary. And the Aussies can clinch the series with a win tomorrow. Well, Lewis Hamilton has opened the new Formula One season in style. Hamilton held off Red Bull's Max Verstappen to win the Bahrain Grand Prix by just seven tenths of a second. It's his 96th career win, closing in on a century that no other driver has ever achieved. I think in Lewis's trophy warehouse, I think he should put that one nearer the front. <laughs> yeah, but then he wouldn't see the ones at the back. Daniel Ricciardo overcame an early tangle to finish seventh, 20 seconds behind McLaren teammate Lando Norris. So 
though. Not the ideal start there. And the MotoGP season got underway in Qatar this morning. Aussie Jack Miller had to settle for ninth behind Maverick Benali's. World champion Juan Mir was set to finish second, but an error on the final corner cost him. Oh no, Mir's Mir's been absolutely lost Can you believe it? Oh no! Oh no, for sure. Italian legend Valentino Rossi finished 12th. So that is our sport. Rosanna. Mm, I feel a bit sorry for Chris Fagan, who's only got four pairs of jocks. Stuck in <laughs> Maybe they brought in some reinforcements from Brisbane, those think, players that flew in today. I think someone needs to introduce him to Kmart or Target. Thank you very much, Nikki. Now we've got something utterly cute for you right after the break. Meet the four otter pups who've just celebrated their first birthday. And Amelia will be back with the latest on our warming weather. I'm back. Original team is back as Daryl Summers returns to TV with Sonia Kruger dancing with the stars All Stars after Easter on Seven. Hey, I was thinking. Where to next? I mean, we could. Yeah, or maybe a bit of. I'll drive a few book. You're on. Are you living with a particular health condition? Do you need help getting out of your chair? The Posture Care Chair Company has the perfect solution for your needs. Each chair is made to measure and built to support your whole body. Handcrafted right here on our Adelaide premises and backed by our 100% comfort guarantee. Call now and book a free in-home measure and save $400 on your tailor-made recliner. Or visit our showroom and find the chair that suits your needs. The Posture Care Chair Company. I'd like a bar of chocolate, please. Your change. Happy birthday, Mum. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Every year, I think, Patty, this will be it. You'll be picked. It's bigger than medals, bigger than money, bigger than premierships. This is why we play. And surely this year, I'll be chosen as a NAB mini legend. Zach Tui? How many brown eyes is he won? Supporting footballers from NAB AFL Auskick to the big time. NAB, more than money. This home near the city, sold by McGain. Here in the south, sold by McGain. Down by the beach, that's right, sold by McGain again. Buying or selling, there's one line to remember. Sold by McGain again. Termites attack one in three homes. Call Pest Aid now to take advantage of 20% off termite services. But hurry, it's for a limited time only. Pest Aid, call us or book online today. Protecting your health and property. It's March Madness at Canningvale.com. Palazzo Royale sheet sets from $49.99. Terrazzo towel sets now $39.99. Scented reed diffusers now $19.99. March Madness at Canningvale.com. $55,000. <laughs> With huge money on the line. $65,000. Who would you choose to face on the chase? The governess. Just love a lady with brains. Goliath. I think he's one that we can pick off. See if he can walk the walk. The Chase. Weekdays on 7. Good afternoon, it's Bethany Hisker from the SA Landscape Festival Traffic Centre. In Collinswood you'll find some urgent gas works on North East Road near Hampstead Road, so we expect delays and restrictions there. Speeds are at 40 and it's getting busy on Main North Road near Nottage Terrace as well. See some of Adelaide's best private gardens at this year's SA Landscape Festival. Meet the designers and be inspired. April 10 and 11, tickets at salandscapefestival.com.au. That's the latest Adelaide traffic. Now back to you, Rosanna. Thank you, Bethany. After becoming a must-watch online during lockdown, those utterly cute pups have grown up.
The four Melbourne Zoo residents are now showing off, delighting visitors with impressive underwater feeding displays. The small clawed otter pups have just had their first birthday and the boys are already bigger than their mum. Looking good indeed. Let's get a check of the weather now and Amelia's in the hills this afternoon where it's a busy time ahead of the Easter long weekend. Amelia. Oh, Rosanna, it certainly is here at Melbourne's Chocolate Factory. They begin working on Easter in August and say they've already recorded their busiest Easter period yet and it's not even the long weekend. They think that's largely due to the fact that many people are choosing to holiday at home here in SA and head to the hills and visit their factory here in Woodside. Now, so far, they think they've already produced around three tonnes of just Easter chocolate and are anticipating 8,000 people will visit the factory here over the four days day long weekend. They'll have food trucks and plenty of things here to do as well. We've got a sunny week leading into Easter too after a bit of fog around the hills this morning. Clear skies this afternoon. It was a cool start in the city down to 10.7 degrees and we hit a top of 23.9 just before 4pm. Right now it's around the 23 degree mark outside elsewhere and a generally fine afternoon around the capitals too. Perth's the warmest sitting at 36 degrees currently. Melbourne and Hobart are sitting below 20 though while Brisbane's on 26 and could collect a shower or two tonight. Now our fine conditions today and sunny outlook ahead is all thanks to a high pressure system that's sitting near KI. It'll continue heading east this week. It'll hold its influence over SA into the weekend before a low pressure trough rolls through on Saturday. For now, a fine day's in store across our far north tomorrow, up to 29 degrees in Moomba. 30 is the forecast top for Cooper Pedy, Roxby Downs, Woomera and Lee Creek. 31 for Murray, Port Augusta and Sejuna. With a sunny day ahead further south as well. 27 is the top for Port Lincoln, Wyala, Clare and Nuriotpa. 28 for Kadena, Murray Bridge and Renmark. 24 for Victor Harbour. 23 for Mount Gambier. With a chance of further fog about the southeast Murray Lands, KI, and about the southeastern slopes of the Mount Lofty Ranges in the morning. In the city, down to 12 degrees overnight. Another cool start, then more sunshines around tomorrow. 27 is the forecast top, 28 for Elizabeth, 26 for Norlunga. Then for the second half of the week, we're expecting top temperatures around the 30 degree mark. So good conditions for eating chocolate, if you ask me, Rosanna. Although if you ask me, I'll probably tell you any time is good for eating chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Try and bring some back. Thank you, Amelia. And that's all from 7 Adelaide's afternoon news team. Jane will have our next bulletin at 6 o'clock. From me, it's bye for now.